Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And I'm gonna let her be in charge. Gonna, I am in charge. Yeah, she's in charge of this video. We're gonna talk about the impending Hollywood writers strike, the WGA strike. Yes, okay, so I was I was out on the internet today and I saw this story on Deadline and I thought, well, we're gonna have to talk about this. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about this. That's all you're gonna say, is we're gonna have to talk about but it. But before we talk about it, <laughs> before we talk about it, see it's throwing me up, before we talk about it, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys, you'll get a woohoo from Geeky. Woo or am I supposed to woohoo today? You can get, you can woohoo. Woohoo. That's, are you mocking me? No, I'm not. That's my. That's not your woohoo. Exuberant. That is not. That is you trying to pretend to be me and I am not me. pretending to be you. Give me an actual woohoo. Woohoo. Okay. See, I was pretending to be that's excited. That's actually, that's actually more your speed. Yay. Um. <laughs> that's gonna be, that's gonna be the, like, my Squidward, like, yay. Okay. All right. So I saw this article on Deadline today, and it's talking about the Writers Guild strike, and they're going to explain it, the issues, the stakes, why it's what's somewhere. affected. No, I know why they're doing it. All, well, I mean, obviously it's a uh, it's a big story, right? But all these Hollywood papers, they're already scraping by, looking for news that people want to read, and if all the shows and the movies go on hiatus. What the hell are they going to talk about? Well, again, we talked about this before, and you have places like Netflix talking about how, well, if it happens, it happens, but we've got a bunch of Korean shows. Yeah, they don't care. So this happened before. This happened like 15 years ago. There was a writer striking back then. We didn't have all the streaming and things we have now. Right. This was uh, before YouTube was a big thing. This is before, you know, podcasts is before, you know, everybody is making their own content. And I think Hollywood really overestimates how important they are, especially in an era when they are cutting shows, canceling That's movies, just it. canceling stuff. Like you're, you're literally, this is what I don't understand. And a, uh, a friend of mine wrote me the other day. He's like, oh yeah, now that all these uh, websites are losing ad revenue, now is the perfect time to try to unionize. Now they're already unionized, mm -hmm. but usually what happens is so many workers and, and look, I feel bad if you're getting laid off. I'm sorry. I am. I'm not trying to be a dick about it, but so many of these workers don't realize the economics, like the money has run out. You're actually making it easier for them to just cancel your projects because they're like, well, we were going to cancel it anyway. Now there's a writer's strike. Now we have an excuse to cancel everything. Well, I think what over. happened was during the pandemic, they all decided they were going to do more, 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 more. Yeah. And because everybody was going to streaming and they thought, oh, this, this, this gravy train's never going to end. So they greenlit a bunch of stuff and which they've turned around and canceled a bunch of stuff. And then the things that, that these writers got on and a lot of them, I'm sorry, were activisty Hollywood types. And they made changes to things that did not go over well. And since the viewership sucked, they got rid of them. But what's going on is the people that are in these unions think that one, they should be paid more. Yes. Even though they're cutting everything. And two, that even if their show is cut, they should be there, they should just hire more of them. Um, for the other shows to make up the difference, which yeah, makes no flipping sense. Literally, they're, what they're calling for is to be like, oh, we need to make sure we have more people in the writer's room. I'm like, actually, that has too many cooks in the kitchen. You look at the shows that are the most successful, a lot of times they are the vision of just one or two people just getting it done versus having... And they might have a few writers that work underneath them, but yeah. Right, but they, they're overseeing it versus having like 50 people and the show being all over the damn place. Mm -hmm. You know, or there being so much red tape you have to jump through to get something done. Right. And I well, I agree that the writers that, that do have work should be paid, you know, better because they haven't been getting increases, increases in pay. I think that their demands are kind of ridiculous. So here, this is like the two sides. One side are the Hollywood studio network streamers and hundreds of motion picture producers, blah, blah, blah. And the other is the Writers Guild of America, which represents writers in Hollywood who are members, which most working scribes are. And they're talking about their unions and things. Okay, what's the issue? The survival of writing as a profession is at stake. No, no, it's not. No, no, it's, it's not. not. Um, they said they're meant, they're talking about how they would be making good living wages. It's much harder to do these days. Yes, because seasons are shorter and they're cutting projects. Driven in large part by the shift to streaming, writers are finding their work devalued in every part of the business because it doesn't bring value. That that's okay. So th God. Okay. Economics. There's a book out there called Who Moved My Cheese? Yeah, you brought this up a couple and times. And it's an old man book for old man market, but it's very appropriate in this situation. The economy is changing. 
the landscape, the entertainment landscape is changing. What worked 20 years ago doesn't work now because people have endless possibilities without Hollywood. And really, most of the shows on streaming, every one of these streaming services might have one or two big hits. And then like hundreds of garbage shows that never get renewed or whatever. Well, so it, it's like, okay, let's, we'll, do, let's, we'll put it in simple terms for simple people. Um, you have a restaurant, okay? And then a fast food chain comes in and they start taking all your customers from your restaurant, okay? So now you have a third of the business your restaurant had before. You do not hire more staff at that restaurant, even you know, to, to, even though everybody else is getting laid off and you have a third of the work. You do not hire more because you don't have the money to hire more. And even if the owner owns 10 different restaurants and has money, they're separate entities and that restaurant is under no obligation to hire more, more people at that restaurant because you're upset at, at higher rates because you're upset that the restaurant isn't doing well. The, That's not how the world works. They, they, here's the thing. A lot of these writers... And I'm not saying everybody on Twitter. <laughs> a lot of these writers, especially younger writers working for streaming services, have not been living in the real world. We've had eight or ten years where there was funny money going around. Oh, you mean to like bankroll all this stuff? Sh- like five star cafeterias and coffee bar, a wine bar, you know, uh, meditation rooms aren't standard business practice for people outside of Hollywood. No. No. What? Oh you my don't God. say. But but what about the masseuse? The masseuse. I have that, a masseuse. Um, I call him neon. <laughs> so. I was I was waiting for you to name somebody else, and I would be like, "Well, that's a whole other video. We're gonna have to." Yeah, have Raul. Raul. Oh, that was my Spanish name in Spanish I know, class. You told me before. Oh, okay. I thought I'm just like, wait. I'm like, how many Raul's do I know? Raul. You used to make jokes about Raul's. Yes, that Raul. was your spa- your name me in Spanish class. Raul. Mine was mine was French, yeah. and it was Chantal. Chantal. Anyway, yes. Yes, that was so, Raul. And I actually had a, a, a crawdad I caught in the creek and I put in a fish tank. Don't do that because they make the water filthy. But I had – and I named him Raul. So I see I knew – and you used I fed him bacon. Anyway. That probably is why the water was – He's an abomination. Anyway, so the, we continue. They're talking about their devalued work. Okay. While company profits have remained high. No, they haven't. And spending on content has grown. No, it's not. Writers are falling behind. The companies have used the transition to streaming to cut writer pay and separate and separate writing from production, worsening working conditions for series writers at all levels. They've shrunk the series orders. And when you have less of a show, you need less writers. And companies are, are, are tightening their belts like Disney and them are cutting all over the place. Amazon... All of them. Facebook, everybody's cutting because there's not a, they don't need all these shows. And what is, yeah, and the problem is, is again, it's like, it's not even an 80 20 rule with these streaming services. It's more like a 95 5 rule. Like of the content they're producing, only 5% of that content actually brings any value to well, the platform. The, the mindset for streaming was in Disney, like Bob Chapek even said that it was, it was a quantity over quality. Well, that has bit them in the ass. So, you know, during the pandemic, since the pandemic especially, this bit them in the ass. People want fewer shows, but they want good shows. Well, that means there's less going to be produced. And the money's going to be, you know, set to several good shows as opposed to two dozen shitty shows with like one or two good shows. And they're trying to refocus. So they're not going to fucking hire. If the writing industry, what it was, and when the first or the other strike happened, what was that, like 2008, 2007, yeah. whatever it was, it's the probably quadrupled in number since then. All right. And they want more pay and more writers. They literally want a show that maybe hired five writers to have like 10 writers in there to make sure they all stay employed at higher rates, which makes no fucking sense. And no company is going to do that. This is uh, like, I I cannot stress to you. This is going to God, this is going to be such an eye opener for so many people in so many industries. You all have been living in fantasy land. You have been living, writing it. You've been writing fancy. You've been living in fantasy land. So many of these writers uh, so many of these people working in tech, um, you know, younger people, especially like you got to, you, you know, you basically you didn't have to pay your dues. You got out of college. Uh, a lot of times they have the right, uh, the right check boxes. They were the right kind of people. So they kind of jumped to the head of the line, got hired at these companies that had ridiculous money to burn. And now they're finding out that it's gone. The money's gone. The venture capital has gone. So now businesses have to go back to being actual businesses. Mm hmm. Oh my God, where they have to turn a profit. So, so you're not going to have the luxury of 
you know, having these companies fund your multi-million dollar fan fix anymore that don't make any money and have no path forward to mm -hmm. profitability. And you're not going to be able to attack your audiences long term and dr actively drive customers away because that company needs that money because they can't just go to Silicon Valley Bank and dip in and take a few hundred million more out. Well, the downside too for writers is there's so many of them now and there's so there's so fewer jobs that, you know, it puts these studios in the catbird seat because they can be like, well, if you don't want to take what we're offering, well, there's like 10 other people who want a job so bad, they'll take it. And what is going to happen? Now, I don't know. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that's No, I'm not saying happen. it's right. What will happen? And I don't know the logistics of it or if they're allowed to or whatever because Netflix is more of a, they're a studio, but they're also a tech company. They will go outside the studio system, outside of the union system to find talent if they can do it. They'll do more comedy specials. They'll yeah, do more, they'll do more independent shows that people are producing other places. And so... It's good for independent people. It is. And they'll go out to social media. They'll see who's actually bringing it on social media. And they'll be like, let's let's do a show based on that. Hey, Netflix. <laughs> call me. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So they're saying, what do the writers want? They want to see gains Job in security. Comp yeah, basically. Compensation residuals and curbs on mini rooms, where groups of writers work in advance on the production of a television series to break stories and write scripts. But that's how it was. And they argued the producers were well able to compensate. You make enough money at that studio. You you should be giving us the money. Well, all these actors are deciding with the writers. Why aren't they taking pay cuts so the writers get more money? Yeah, this is like this whole system is going to collapse. It's not... Sustainable. This is the new economic reality. 2023 is going to be a year of fundamental change in entertainment and media. And these people are, are really, really slow. They're really, really well, we're dumb. We're seeing it just even in, like for blogs with the, with the, yeah. with the money. Um, the entertainment segments of the industry's major companies, Netflix, Paramount Global, Warner Brothers Discovery, Fox, Disney, Comcast, NBC Universal, posted an average of $29 billion in annual, uh, annual operating income. Between 2017 and 2021. Operating income. Right. That's not the same thing as profit. Right. Legacy Operating media income. companies' profits in 2022 are lower. But these companies expect improvement as they build towards well, increased not, profitability and streaming. Not There's if too many. They're eating each other. Yeah, not if they're overpaying their staff for shows that aren't going to perform. They're not going to make any profits. They're they admitted their, their profits were down, so let's ask for more money. That's what all these that's people are doing. Making, that's why they're cutting everything. The, this is common sense. Um, God, it hurts. All these bloggers now, you know, they're all, they, they see that the ad rates are down. So they're like, oh, let's go unionize. And then you know what that's usually followed by? Hey, we're shutting your blog down. Mm -hmm. Because they know they can, the companies know they cannot afford to keep everybody on at the amount of money that they're making. And I can tell you again, as you know, people that run blogs, literally, we're watching the situation very closely, and the blog advertising revenues running out. It's 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 really dropped off a cliff, and uh, some of the video ad rates have gone down. YouTube actually posted a loss. Mm -hmm. um, now we've actually been holding pretty steady, but if you're a a big company. A couple percents it could be the difference between hiring, you know, seventy people and hiring a hundred people. You know, right? Um, so it's like we, they can't absorb the but losses. They're admitting it. Their 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 profits are lower. Yes. So they're so they're like, well, your profits are down. Um, you're cutting stuff, but you need to not. If you're cutting stuff, you need to take whatever show you're showing five people on it. Well, now you have to have ten people on it because to make so everybody stays employed and pay us more. That's not how this works. That's how none of this works. And then they said that. Um, they do want to have different things to establish policy on AI. I do agree with them on that because AI is 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 concerning in, in the art field, in writing, and different things. I get where they're coming from for AI. Yeah, but well, yeah, because the problem with AI is it's literal. Well, <laughs> so are some writers. I was say it's literally just taking pre-existing things and recombinating right. them. Um, but the 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 irony in all this is is the the AI might actually be better because if you tell somebody and there was a I think it was Perch uh, Perch is a comic book YouTuber mm -hmm. and I think he was talking about how Chat GPT could generate a better X Men comic book script that's closer in tone to classic eighties nineties X Men 
than what Marvel's producing now. Because oh, well, it's, they, yeah, it's that would be hard. Because it's trying to uh, create something that the reader is going to enjoy based on past success. And the people they hire currently, a lot of them are trying to create something that everybody will not enjoy except yes. for them and their five friends yes. and ten old accounts. For hipsters. Hipsters mm -hmm. are like, oh. And you aren't going to buy the damn book anyway. We're, we're going to make Star Wars very niche for us. Right, yeah, right, right. For our representation. Yeah, that's so, not Star Wars. Sorry. So what do the streamers and the, the mean, nasty streamers and network or networks want? Well, if they want to make sure they can keep making profit because if they want to stay in business so there's jobs for writers 10 years from now, they need to. How do they not understand? Because this is because these people do not have the grasp on basic economics. It blows my mind how they even passed high school. This is common core in action. The, the piggy bank is empty. The piggy bank you is empty. You can't get any more money out of the piggy bank. I, I, know, I know when you add, you know, zero plus zero and it equals zero that that might not be common core math and some people are going to say it's racist. <laughs> they do. That's racist to say that I have zero dollars. But these companies you're working for, if they play by your rules, they will have zero dollars and there will be zero jobs. For anyone. For anyone. Mm -hmm. For anyone. Yeah, you know, I don't you know, want to tell they you. They have to employ a lot of people, not just the writers. You were you putting, I, look, I'm not trying to be a dick. I, I do agree in cases. In cases, there are absolutely uh, reasons to unionize what they are doing right now. And this is the same thing happened with the bloggers. What they're doing is they see how bad things are getting and they want to make sure that they can't be fired or if they are fired, they get a massive payout. Mm -hmm. That That's what this, this is an oh shit moment. Mm -hmm. We better get ours before we get gone. That, that's they all have, this is about. They have, you know, a thousand, I'm just using an example, a thousand writers when they need maybe 500. Right. And the other 500 are like, well, you have to still keep us employed and pay us more. That's not how, that's not how the real world works. Okay, they said, the line of argument from producers says the streaming is still emerging business and studios and networks don't know what the profit margins will look like or how they'll be achieved. Yes, true, because right now we're in the middle of a streaming war and everybody and their, their dog has a streaming service. And what's happening is... It's like dog with a blog. Yeah, pretty much. And everybody has a with stream. a show. They, well, pretty much, I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, oh that's, that's Jada Pinkett. They took her show oh, off. Oh, we're going to talk about anyway, that too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, everybody has these, these, these streaming services. And what's happening is because there's so many and it's costing people more than cable at this point. Yes. Uh, people are cutting the cord on them, too. Mm -hmm. And they are eating each other. And because there's not enough money uh, in these companies, they're cutting, you know, jobs and shows right and left. And they're, and they're sticking with performers, the ones that, that do well. And a lot of them have uh, good writing, good characters, good whatever, and they aren't super, super heavy activism-driven shows. Okay? So they only can afford to keep, if they only can afford 100 shows, they can't, you know, make 500 shows to employ, you know, thousands of extra writers at high price pay at points because you, you, you're mad. You I mean, what about everybody else who works on shows? What about their jobs and their, should they just get all get fired to give you more money? Well, that's what's going to happen. They don't understand. This has happened before. What's going to happen is there are going... So they already know this, which is, which is why they're trying to sneak in. Oh, you got to make sure you have so many people in the writer's room. Because what will happen is be like, okay, well, if now writer costs, you know, just uh, spitting numbers out there because I don't know who's getting paid what. If a writer used to cost $100,000 and now they cost $200,000 and we used to have 10 writers, well, now we can only afford five writers. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, maybe less because they keep shrinking. They don't right. have the money they used to have. So now they're trying to argue they have more money, but I don't. I Bullshit. don't buy it. Oper operating income. Operating income is not the same thing as profit. And yeah. So anyway, yeah, continue. Like, I'm sorry. Netflix. I'm just like I, I don't understand how they don't understand I don't this. Netflix C co CEO Ted Sarandos recently estimated the company's expected content spend for 2024 at 17 billion. Okay, and that's a lot of money. And two and a half of that is going to Korea. Yeah. And reported Q1 free cash flow that zoomed to $2.1 billion compared to $800 million in the year ago quarter. That's pretty healthy emerging business. Yeah, but you have to remember, too, um, they prob they cut stuff. So yeah. they had more money. Yeah. They were spending less and had more money coming in. That's how profit works. If you cut a lot of shit and then you have more money left over, that's profit. Well that Take a class. I don't want to tell you. Does this mean that we're not going to get a season six of Netflix Shira? Oh, yeah. You know what I say? I have two all you Shira stands who just will not stop obsessing about me. They didn't get this far into the video. Don't Fuck they? you. Fuck you hard. Oh, they fuck themselves hard. Fuck you hard with Bo because 
that does not catch her at a Dora just to piss you off. Anyway. Some of them probably prefer Mo. Well, you know what? Those people, mm -hmm. then, then, then they'll be happy. But usually the people that give us a shit ton of trouble are Kedora fans. You know what? People still care about classic she -Ra. They already kicked shit on and stepped over your she -Ra. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but keep obsessing, bitches. So anyway, we're talking about this. They said that we're, we're, we're talking about we're all partners in charting the future of business together, committed to reaching a mutual beneficial deal. They want they they basically are saying we'll work with you. But the thing is, the demands are ridiculous. I think that it's going to mean fewer writers because there's just not the jobs for them. Now, the writers they have left should probably get paid better because their their seasons are shorter and things. But the flip side is you can work on more shows. I, I, I just, you do not need the massive amount of writers you have. And you cannot tell companies that they have to hire twice as many people as they need at higher rate just to make sure that more people stay employed because, you know, in the last several years, the industry, you know, demanded more, you know, it was growing and demanded more writers, but now it's shrinking because it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the sustainability and the money it used to have. And you're going to start seeing companies like gobble each other up. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the way they're this gonna, works. They're going to eat each other out. It's called streaming. I know it's they're called good. streaming wars for a reason. Eat each other's asses. That's it's Hollywood's. That's, well, come on. It's going to be like oh. a human centipede over there. This was, this is my favorite part. What TV shows would be affected? The late night shows would likely be the first hit. And nothing of value is lost. Well, James Corden's gone. Yes, who cares? Jimmy Fallon is drunk half the time. I mean, I, I mean, just, you know, when, oh, he was home. You know, I'm just like so... Fucking what? The light shows. And then, you know, next will be net. I think it's supposed to be next to be impacted. It'll be daytime TV. Soap operas. Yeah. Oh. They, look, th look, this has happened before, and you know what? It was fine. Actually, back then when it happened, 15 years ago, we had a different generation of writers who were actually talented and resourceful. They and, have talented, resourceful writers now. And entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have those anymore. And they started websites like Funny or Die. Mm -hmm. They went back to Cracked. Um, there were all kinds of internet entertainment that, that popped up because of the writer's strike. But then that was kind of a double-edged sword because when everything came back online, people were like, well, I, I kind of like the internet stuff better than mm -hmm. the... The Hollywood stuff, and, so. and you can you can scream and 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 stop your work, and it's really not going to change anything because there are so many shows that people cannot even watch everything that's out there. So they'll just find another show to watch until it comes back or their show comes back on, um, or they'll just go you know watch the, the shows from other countries that they're bringing into places like Netflix. It's not going to turn out the way it did in two thousand seven and two thousand eight. Okay, no. it's just not. Nope. So we're talking about Saturday Night Live would be affected. Has it even been funny lately? I mean, except for a couple things here and there. The show has not been funny in years. Who cares? You could honestly probably get more mileage out of just doing clip compilations of the best of Saturday Night Live mm -hmm. when they were allowed to be funny and just run that in reruns right. and people will be fine. I mean, how many, what do you have, like freaking 50 years of SNL? I'm sure there's sketch comedy shows that are on YouTube right now that you can just yeah. watch it are probably funnier. Yep. And then, about, and then and then after that, after after the late night shows and the late, late show and the late, 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 it's early morning now shit show, we, we're going to have, we're going to have soap operas are going to be cut. You know, the what, what, three that are left, you know, and they have decades of content. Saturday Night Live, oh shit, Saturday Night Live might get cut so we don't get to see a bunch of actors show up and, and you know, pretend like they're good at something. And then they said, then we're going to have the episodic shows are going to be impacted. At the end. So the ones people care about will be the last on the list of what's going to be impacted, okay? And they're talking about, well, they usually begin work in May and June for preparation for September and October. Again, yeah, it might slow some of these shows down. But there's more content on Netflix and, you know, these other places that, than you're ever going to watch and you yeah. ever could watch anyway. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Like, uh, look, there's so much stuff that's been produced on streaming and so much subpar stuff. Actually, they had articles that uh, millennials are going back and watching linear TV. They're watching reruns of like MASH. Oh my gosh, they're watching all these kids are like, and like you know, our kids' age. They're all going back and watching South Park and all these shows from oh, the Pinky 80s Boo's and been 90s. Watching Friends. I you, mean, you there has been so because again, you know, I mean, we've got decades and decades and decades of pop culture, and since they're just rebooting a lot of the stuff badly. People are just going back and same with comics. People are going back and reading old comic books. They're going back and buying older albums on vinyl. Well, a lot of people They're that are watching. doing it are were never were there for the first time around. So, so it's, it's all new to them. It's new to them. And it, it's to the test of time. It's a pop culture icon for a reason. 
So yeah. they're going back and enjoying it too now. And it's like, you know, and so the old audience that loved it is going back. And now the, all the younger people are all, you know, clinging on to this stuff from the 80s and 90s and going back. And, you know, they don't need your new shit. They just don't. I mean, this is the sad truth. The sad truth. And this is like, I mean, like what? Yeah. Even, even in our case, you know, doing comics and doing stuff like that. The reality is, is there is so much pop culture that has been produced that we could stop producing any new pop culture tomorrow. And there would be infinite lifetimes of content for somebody to, to mm -hmm. listen to, to watch, to read. We would never have to make another thing. Right. There's so much of it out so there. So that's, that's the problem here. Yeah. And it's like, like again, I mean, I, I understand where they're coming from. I understand that their seasons are shorter. They're getting paid less and everything else. And, you know, you might be tied up for months over these, this stuff. I get it. So maybe pay, you know, the ones that are the good ones more and then weed out the ones that aren't pulling their weight or that, are, that don't perform or that lead to shows that, that, you know, get canceled because they, they suck, you know, maybe get rid of those. But now they're talking about the worst case scenario about movies and they're like, well, it's not going to impact movies to 2024, maybe. And I'm like, well, you know what? It's not going to be different than the pandemic. Pandemic pushed movies back for a year, for years yeah. and, and people were fine. Yeah. So it's really not not going to be that big of a deal. Actually, most people, you know, other than a couple of movies getting shifted around where they did not care. People went back and they watched, again, older shows, older movies. They go on strike for a, two years. If we had two years where Hollywood didn't produce anything new, most people, it wouldn't bother them. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, let's be honest. They're talking about, oh, the longest strike on record was 1988 and lasted 153 days. 1988, when no one had streaming and it was only TV. We didn't have options. Followed by the 1960 strike at 146 days. Again, 1960. You know, yeah. and then the 2007, 2008 strike that lasted 100 days and there's more support for this strike this time around. Yeah, because there's probably five times the amount of writers there were in 2007 and 2008. And I would say 75 percent of them are activists at this point. They're working for streaming companies. They're younger. They want to make sure they have job security. And um, yeah, I mean, it's like, look, I, I don't I, and I feel bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're going to get laid off. Do you want to hear their, their okay. logic for the more support? Okay. Proves everything I'm saying. Okay. Back in 2017, they took a strike authorization, and it was approved by 96.3% of the 6,310 writers or cast ballots. The, with, uh, they're talking about 2007, the authorization to vote was approved by 90% of voters. The strike authorization this time was approved by 98% of eligible voting members. Notice they don't tell you how many writers are uh, eligible voting members, because they don't want you to, to see what the comparison was. It's probably like, oh, back in 2017, we only had 6,000 people. Now we got like 18,000 people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the fact is that they're calling for more people to be in the writer's room, even when they don't need to be in the writer's room. That tells me that there's way more people than there yeah, is. Yeah, you had me at yeah. the you know more money thing, but it was when you – and, and more, you know. You have to bring it. Yeah, but no, no. But when you start telling me that that you had, that you're demanding that they only have to pay these writers more, but you have to hire a bunch of us even if you don't need us. Yeah. That's – that. no. That's not how this works. Um, I'm this, sorry. This is a great opportunity for studios outside of Hollywood – outside of the WGA to be like, we're going to make content. Do you want to license our content, Netflix? Do you want to, you know, that's, that's a great example. So anyway, you know, they're all, everybody, it sounds like other, other guilds are going to, they're, yeah, their they're contracts all, they're all up too. To, yeah. And they're all going to want more money and more jobs too. Because what's going on is, and they all see it, is that it's all shrinking. The pie is shrinking because they're going to focus on quality pie, that's smaller pie. And that means that, you know, a lot of these people aren't going to be part of the pie anymore. Yeah. So and I'm sorry, that sucks, but... Hollywood doesn't understand math. It's like that, if, if the economy isn't supporting you, you can't... I mean, any other company. If your company has to cut people because, they're, they're, you know, there's, they're, they're, there's not enough jobs... You can't sit there and demand, well, I want more pay and I want you to hire. For, for each shift, we have to have 20 more people paying paid when there isn't enough to work for the people you have there. Just be happy these Hollywood studios aren't sending the Pinkertons to tell you not to, yeah. not to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Hasbro's going back. Yeah, you're, yeah, right? You're working in toys now. They're going to send the Pinkertons after you. Are um, we wrapping this up? I think we're wrapping it up. It's a weekend. We're just whatever. I, I just can't. I just can't. I guess our thing is we just work. can't wrap our head around it. Like it just, I, I, I just, the entitlement is off the chart. And, and the people are like, you're anti-union. No, no, I think if people are being mistreated, if people are being overworked and underpaid and put in dangerous positions, unions are fantastic. Yes. I think that, you know, asking for more money um, 
on some of these projects that are going very well makes sense. Yeah, you should be paid in accordance with what you're bringing. Right. right? But yeah. I also think there's way more writers than there were last time there was a strike. I think there's way fewer, there was way more shows than there were then, but they're cutting these shows right and left. There is not enough room at the table for all the people that are currently working there. No. And that's just a sad reality of it. I do not, we do not take joy in it. We're just pointing out the fact that there's no more seats at the table. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, look. We'll make a new table. Yeah, yeah that's exactly it. I, again, in a different era, and I, I do believe that there are going to be some people that will get get the clue and be like, yeah, we can't depend on Hollywood anymore. We have to go do our own thing. And you might be more uh, successful for, for doing it. Yeah, I think this, this might be the wake-up call that a lot of these Hollywood people need to be like, we can't put all of our eggs in one basket anymore. Like we got to go. And I, I would love to see, I personally would love to see whether it's, it's animation or with, um, you know, Hollywood productions, movies, whatever. I would like to see the entertainment industry broken up, fragmented, scattered all over the country. You want to talk about diversity. So it's not just in one location. Right. You want to talk about diversity. You want to talk about, you know, getting different points of view, different points of view, different voices. We, we start little pockets of studios all over the country because we have the technology now. We can do it. And people can be making making movies in Minnesota and not even have a Hollywood connection. Be like, we got a studio in Minnesota. If you want movies with a Minnesota flavor, we we make those. And then we, we license them out to Hollywood studios. We get them done on our own terms. And that's how it works. And basically, Hollywood becomes a distributor or something. Or maybe... Maybe there's a distributor in Florida, or maybe there's a distributor in, you know, Pittsburgh. Kansas or Pittsburgh. Yes, there's a lot. This needs to happen because every all the power is centralized in Hollywood, and it actually is a problem. It's a huge problem that all the power is centralized in Hollywood. Well, you needs, know, we need to break this up. And if the producers and directors and other actors are, are, are feel that strongly about them striking it, and they feel that they, they are right to do so, they are more than they can always take pay cuts. Yeah. To make sure that the writers have more writers hired and more writers are paid better. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. So uh, anyway, you first. And then. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.